it's your mean again i hope everyone is doing well in today's video i'm going to talk about colorism and racism and what i've experienced and bring up a few examples as well but before i say that i want to say i wear it a week today because i actually went to an event a dance event in town and i was going to do a braid out but we've been having rain for i feel like it was over 15 hours not 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 like straight but we had a thunderstorm that started last night and then off and on all day we've had rain and thundering and lightning and stuff so i was like okay i'm not gonna get a good braid out because i like my braid outs to be when there's no humidity in the air and we've had too much so yeah it's been raining basically on and off all day and i got back from the dance event at like eight o'clock kind of eight o'clock a little bit before eight o'clock i think or a little after eight o'clock but yeah i was like i'm gonna wear a wig today this is only my second time wearing my wig in public but you see me in wigs online more times than i've ever done in, in person so anyway so going on going into colorism i did two previous videos on colorism before the first one was basically my feedback and not really fully understanding that colorism goes both ways and then the second video was actually like going into it with my new understanding about it and both times that I've and then I did a recent video not based on colorism but it was talking about um the exotical community and the black community online and I brought up colorism in that video as well and what I want to say is like there's been a f like in comments and replies people are not listening to the fact that colorism does go both ways and black women of any skin tone mixed women biracial women of any skin tone that have african descent can either be colorist or experience colorism no matter what their skin tone is and keep, people keep thinking that it's not so and like in my second colorism video that I did I actually read comments from light-skinned women who said they experienced colorism and people keep forgetting that colorism towards dark-skinned women is still bullying and colorism towards light skin is the exact same thing and they keep thinking oh it's systematic versus it's bullying colorism that's expressed verbally is usually a form of bullying so i don't know why people keep forgetting that so anyway i want to start this video off by talking by reading the definition of colorism again and then i'm going to read another definition so colorism based on an article published by kimberly j norwood washington university and st louis school of law publication title um Anyway, so abstract. This is just part of her paper. Colorism, a term believed to be first coined. Coined means created a word. So coined in 1982 by Pulitzer Prize winner Alice Walker was defined by her to mean the prejudicial or preferential treatment of same race people based solely on their color. And this article goes on to say that also anyone who is not part of that particular racial group can also show colorism by showing preferential treatment towards someone of that group that's lighter or darker like they can they can choose someone based solely on their skin color if they're not a black person and like colorism is experienced by black communities around the world latino latina communities around the world by asian people around the world within their group so it's something that's widespread but it but each community experiences it in their own particular way i would think but people outside of the group can actually show like preferential treatment towards people of a particular skin tone and that does happen but people keep forgetting that colorism is expressed between people of the same racial group or mixed people who are part of that group, biracial people who are part of that group, and can be going back and forth between anyone, light skin, dark skin, brown skin. Like, people keep forgetting, and I'm like, yes, okay. So, prejudice basically is an opinion or leaning adverse to anything without just grounds, so they don't have a good reason to feel that way or before sufficient knowledge. So, without, get, without knowing someone, you're going to be you're gonna have a negative opinion about this person. 
Also, it is a, an irrational attitude of hostility directed against an individual, a group, a race, or their supposed their supposed characteristics. That that is from the Merriam Webster Dictionary, which was published in 1979. So their irrational attitude of hostility. I forgot to say this in my last video where I was talking about exoticals versus the black community, but hostility can be directed towards somebody verbally or non-verbally. It can be directed towards somebody without them barely noticing it or with them noticing it. And I've I've seen it, and I'm talking, and I'm gonna get more into that. So hostility, an irrational attitude of hostility directed against an individual, a group, a race, or their supposed characteristics. So that is what colorism is, and that can be experienced by someone who's light skin, dark skin, brown skin. It doesn't matter, and there's people who feel a way about people of different skin tones because that's how they feel. And in spite of the fact them being of the same race or from the same ethnic group, they can still express that hostility in whatever micro way they want to or whatever major way they want to and it's also preferential treatment as well so let me make sure again let me make sure again so it says colorism is prejudicial or preferential treatment of the same race people based solely on their color so yeah so preferential or prejudicial so yeah Okay, so what I want to start off with is, what I want to start off with is, I live in a place that does not have a lot of black people of many, like it doesn't have a black community, there are black people here of multiple different strains, that's not the way to say it, but there are black people who are Caribbean, there are black people who are biracial mixed, there are black people who are African American, African, and... I feel like I'm make, make, missing something. There's even a few people who are like Afro-Indigenous who are actually like biracial as well. But that's the community that I'm in. So the predominant community, the predominant people are like white American, European American. Um, there's Latinos, Latinas here as well. That's the biggest two groups. And then I grew up in New York City. New York City is very diverse, but there's parts of New York City that you can go to and you would be the only person of color sometimes, sometimes, not always. You might be the only person of African descent there. Um, so I grew up in New York City in a predominantly like black neighborhoods, Spanish speaking neighborhoods with people who are Puerto Rican and Dominican. And so I was almost always around people of color especially elementary school, middle school, and high school, like always around people of color. If I went outside of my high school, there would be a little bit more like white Americans around than people of color. I did some, I did, what did I do? Give me one second. I did multiple extracurricular activities, which included a youth activity group, um, an activity group that was based on like pure education. I also did a playwriting group. I also did, um, I think two internships my last year of high school and all of those places minus the, no, all of those places were predominantly with people who were like white American, but there was like a Jewish kid. There was a few Asian kids. Um, I went to a writing camp that was a mixed group of people as well. There was Asian, Black Americans or African Americans, um, a few Caribbeans, Asian. I, yeah, if I repeat, it's because I'm forgetting already what I said. So I've spent a lot of time around people of color and white people when I was in New York City, and I did not experience, I did not experience racism the way there that I experienced it here. And I would say I experienced more colorism in New York City compared to here because there's way fewer black people. So what I want to say also, so I want to say quick examples of two dark skinned people who experienced colorism that was very direct. And the people who said it kind of thought that they weren't saying anything wrong. So one person, she's a travel, 
a traveling influencer and she's a nurse as well she's a beautiful dark-skinned woman of I think Senegalese descent and she lives in the United States as well but she travels a lot she's gorgeous and she experienced colorism I don't remember what time somebody else shared the video because I actually been following this woman before I found out about this experience she had but she was somewhere and somebody said to her oh you're pretty for a dark skinned girl basically this person was a person this person was of African descent just like Mage was Ma Ma Madge Madge her name is Madge um Madge Madge yeah her name is Madge but yeah she experienced direct colorism from someone who looked like her but thought that because of her skin in spite of her skin tone she was pretty or whatever however you would say that but she basically said that she was pretty in spite of her skin tone basically and I was just like ooh we don't say that when we're trying to give someone a compliment just say that she's pretty because she's beautiful Another YouTuber, no, not a YouTuber, both of these ladies are not YouTubers, they're both influencers that I've been following on Instagram. This lady is plus size, a plus size influencer, does multiple things. I don't know her name, like I don't know how to pronounce her name, I actually requested her to pronounce her name so I could say it properly, but she, ain't, she hasn't shared how to say her name yet, and she's an African woman, she lives in the United States as well, and she is... And I forget which country that she's from. I don't want to guess right now. She shared in her Instagram stories sometime in the last two years experiencing colorism from a black woman. And she had gone to a hairstylist. She had gotten her hair done. And she had asked for a very particular style. She did not like the style because it was not done the way she expected it to be. And she knew how it should have looked. And she did not like it. And she expressed her, her not liking it as much as she wanted to. And a person said, oh, maybe it's just your skin tone. Maybe it's just your skin tone. You have to get used to it. Maybe you don't like it against your skin tone. That to me is colorism. Because if somebody said I didn't like my hair because of my skin tone, that's that's colorism in some kind of way so I definitely thought that was colorism and she was pretty upset about that she was like she shouldn't have to be dealing with that with someone who basically looks like her and I was like yeah that's crazy so I think she got that excuse me I think she got that dealt with but I was just like that's definitely clear signs of colorism within the black community that I heard of and I shared some light-skinned women in my second colorism video that they experience colorism and like I said colorism is bullying no matter whether the person's light dark skin or brown skin like bullying based on someone's skin color or giving them the silent treatment because the first time you see them you see that they're light skin or dark skin and you're being weird about it like that's colorism you don't have to always speak to be experiencing colorism so I also when I was a teenager in New York City I did not believe in reverse racism and reverse racism is not a thing um, just like reverse colorism is not a thing because colorism like I said it goes both ways all the ways within the particular racial group or within the ethnic ethnic group so racism yes there is systematic racism especially in the US like we know that there are things in place that seems like um, people of color, whether they are black, Asian, indigenous, um, Latino, Latina, there's things in place that sometimes makes it harder for people to reach the goals that they want to reach in their lives. Lives. Um, also, the healthcare system. There's still prejudice in the healthcare system where people of color, especially well, people of color, and especially if they have dark skin, like they don't do enough studies to recognize like certain signs and symptoms of disease or illness on dark skinned people but also just like if anyone is like of African descent they think that you have a higher pain tolerance they also think that that you're complaining just to complain instead of actually taking it into consideration so there are black doctors who are trying to make that go away trying to let people know that yes black people are still humans too and they do experience things on the same level as other people do 
and on individual levels, people of any race can have higher higher tolerances for pain and people can have a lower tolerance for pain. I have a low tolerance for pain. I hate being in pain. So anyway, and even to the point they've taught this bias in medicine so much so that when I went to a doctor, I had something, I had to do something in 2016 and my nurse was a beautiful Caribbean woman and she asked me like how was my pain for what I was dealing with and I was like da 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 and she kind of gave me this look like oh you shouldn't be in pain and I was just like but I am and I like up until the point of that doctor's visit I was in pain on a monthly basis all the time and it was excruciating and I took the minimal amount of painkillers because I didn't want to I didn't want the painkillers to like be in my body and be it wasn't even about being overly reliant I just didn't want to depend so much on painkillers so I took the lowest dosage until I couldn't take the pain and then I would take a little more and it was always Advil but when I was at the doctor for this particular thing in 2016 this doctor who basically looked like me this nurse sorry this nurse who basically looked like me was giving me this scrunched up face of incredulity because she thought that I shouldn't be in pain, I sh shouldn't be experiencing anything, and I was just like, I dealt with pain. I've de dealt with pain up to a 10, many occasions, and I told her my top, my pain, I think it was below 10, it was maybe 8, 7, or something like that, and she made this face, and I was like, I've never wanted to be dependent on drugs, I've never, never, yeah, I've never been dependent on drugs, never wanted to be to be dependent on drugs give me whatever you need to give me that's not gonna make me addicted to anything and that gets rid of my pain so she did that but she was being like weird about it and that's part of the like bias that they teach in medicine anyway that was long with it so sorry about that so yeah so reverse racism is not a thing so systematic racism is a thing but people can be racist regardless of their race regardless of their ethnicity they can show a, they can show prejudice whatever against people of any other race or ethnic group regardless of the race it's just that systematic racism in the u.s is usually set against people of color no matter what color they are except for like european white americans so people forget that and i didn't realize that when i was a kid i was like reverse colorism doesn't exist and I basically was saying oh you can't be racist against people because of systematic racism so also in my previous video that I did about exoticals and a um, black community I had said something incorrectly about my backstory so I had said that when I experienced racism I would like say something racist back to people the thing is like I said in New York City I experienced barely no racism in New York City so what it actually was is my siblings and I would actually practice what we would say to people if they were racist to us and hopefully that's not too much information but that's what we would do because we did not experience racism we experienced people not being interested in us romantically we experienced like drama and bullying and whatever just based on different things but we did not experience racism and so we just practiced it like what we would say to someone amongst ourselves so i needed i meant to clarify that because i completely forgot how that went so yeah i did not experience racism except for maybe once in new york city and i got away from there because it was a man who threw something at me randomly i don't know if he was mentally ill or if he was being racist but i was like i'm out of here so Back on to, okay, so I'm going to go through, so as a child, like I am the oldest grandchild on my, my maternal side, and as a child, like I experienced more colorism from my own siblings and kids in my neighborhood than I experienced in school, and it's, and like it was be specifically people saying, oh, you too light skin, oh, you're not part of this family, oh, you're adopted, oh, you're this, and, and I was the oldest grandchild of my grandparents' 13 grandchildren. I am the oldest grandchild of my grandparents' 13 grandchildren. And I would get told that, and I, I didn't understand. I had been in foster care at one time for two years. Um, so my siblings saying that I was adopted, I don't know if, I'm assuming it was based on my skin tone. 
but my siblings are predominantly like brown skin no one in my of my siblings is dark skin my mom is brown skin as well my father's light skin so no one in my family experienced like being bullied for being dark skin themselves but they did tease me for being light skin and people would always like not think we were related because of my skin tone and i'm like i literally looked at pictures of us when i was 10 and the rest of them were younger and i was like we're not that far off but we do look different now from each other so anyway so i experienced like getting getting like told that I wasn't part of the family because I was looked that way and then being called a white girl, being called an Oreo because of the way I spoke, the way I looked and all that stuff and I was just like this is so weird. So in middle school I also got bullied and it was usually just like not people talking about my skin tone but they would just bully me randomly for no reason and basically like threaten to beat me up or threaten to put hands on me but thankfully no one ever did like I did not get into fights in high uh, middle school and high school I the one thing the one altercation that happened was with a boy and he should but should not have been bothering me in the first place but yeah usually people were threatening to beat me up and I had no other understanding of why except for maybe it was my skin tone because the people who were bothering me were browner darker skin than I was my best friend in middle school was a brown skinned Caribbean girl she was cute I was cute I guess but I didn't really think I was cute back then and she was very conceited and I just like supported her in her being conceited she always said she was a cute girl she was a cute girl and that was her thing like she was very confident very comfortable and very conceited and I was at her house one day with her mom was in bed her sister was I had like I was going halfway to meet her so that we could walk to middle school together and her older sister was there and like we were talking about my friend being cute or whatever because she's she was always talking about it to this day she still talks about it but I haven't been friends with her for a long long time but <laughs> Her sister, unprovoked when we were talking about my friend being cute, she told me that I was ugly. And I was like, well, that was rude, but I didn't care because, like, I was still getting used to myself back then. And I just knew she was saying it because she just wanted to be mean. And that, to me, was possibly colorism. So, I don't know what to say more than that. Um... And based on, and I've said this a few times online, verbally and in comment sections, because of the extent of the colorism and the teasing on my skin tone that I was getting, um, I did pray to God a few times to be dark skin, like to wake up dark skin, not tanning because like I did tan off and on as a child unintentionally. And I could get really dark, but I did not look good that way because it wasn't my natural tone and it was not done in a healthy way. So that's another thing. But I did pray a few times to God to like miraculously change me to be dark skinned so I wouldn't get teased. But also I knew at that time because of the way my siblings and other people teased me, I knew being dark skinned I would get teased as well. So because it didn't happen, I will just learn to deal with it and and eventually my siblings mostly stopped talking about my skin color um let's see and uh, let's see okay so when i was a teenager i would say i i did not experience like a lot of drama in high school except for and I found this out later so there was these twins in high school and I actually thought they were just um, African-American like me and I found out later on that they were biracial they were Korean and African-American and they were brown skin to darker skin and tone and they were very pretty ladies very pretty and they looked they were fraternal twins so it was easy to tell them apart and the bigger one, she was only slightly bigger, like physically, than her sister, but the bigger one was nice. The skinnier one was not nice, and she was always after me. Like, she was always giving me lip, starting, trying to instigate, like, verbal fights so that she could, like, threaten to beat me up if we got into a verbal, alter, verbal fight, and she was always after me. 
she stopped going after me after I started dating girls in high school. Like, she stopped coming after me, and I was like, I didn't understand it. So, it was either colorism or being pretty, but the thing is, like, yeah, maybe it was because she thought I was pretty, but at the same time, why do you care? Because I wasn't dating anyone in my high school, and the only thing different about me is that I was lighter than her, and I identified as black and African American, and yeah, I did not date anyone. Maybe someone that she liked told them I was cute. But yeah, that woman always had, a, that young lady always had a problem with me up until I started dating girls. So basically for my first year and a half of my high school, she was bothering me and not being nice to me because of either my skin color or because she thought I was pretty and she was jealous about it. And I was just like, nothing to be jealous about, like whatever. So I don't know if that was colorism 100%. So let's see. Oh, and also because, be, so I did not, like my family has a wide range of colors, like in my extended family, and we have a lot more dark skinned people in the family, but I grew up with my siblings, my grandparents, my auntie, my mom, and my stepfather wasn't around too much. So the way we treated people was because, like the way I treated people was because of how I interpreted how my family raised me. Because my siblings, like I said, they were teasing me and all that stuff and their friends would tease me. So how I interacted with people was based on how I was treated and how I was raised. And because my aunt was a beautiful dark skinned woman, is a beautiful dark skinned woman and she's like one of my favorite people in the world. I did not develop and would not develop colorist tendencies because to me, if you're dark skin or brown skin, it's no, like your skin is beautiful. And yeah, I just did not see a reason. So because of knowing that it was a possibility for dark skin women to experience colorism, even though I did not know that's what it was called back then, basically being discriminated against because of their dark skin tone. I made it a point of for my dark skin friends that I had in college, um, high school, sorry, not college, in high school to let them know that they were beautiful, that they were sweet, that they were pretty, all the good things. And I made them, I let them know like their skin color is beautiful and there's nothing wrong with you. And like I did that because I was basically trying to like cushion them from anything that could happen to them in the future based on their skin tone and not knowing if that was going to happen or not but knowing that there are people that tease people about their skin colors that are darker and I was just like I'm not going to be part of that problem and I made that my point so that's that was what I was going to say about that and so let me see so the next time I experienced like to me this is what colorism was so I found out officially about colorism in the 20 teens online and even though it was portrayed as being people being colorist towards dark skinned people, when I heard about colorism I was like that's what I experienced even though I'm not dark skinned. So when I graduated from high school I took a year off. And then I moved in with my grandparents to get ready to go to college a year later about. And I also started my first job in between my year off and before I went to college. Started my first job. So I want to say that this lady was exhibiting colorism towards me because she had no other reason not to like me. So I mentioned in my, I did a video about my first job after high school and the person who was going to be my boss at my first real job she was a caribbean lady and she was a she was like caramel i don't know she was a little bit darker than me she was a caramel skin tone very pretty lady she kept her hair in a very short straightened hairstyle a very pretty lady but the minute she saw me when she was supposed to like it was already my job like i was given the job and she was supposed to basically just take me to the back area she came in and saw me and her face fell. She stopped smiling like immediately and I was just like, that's weird. So I'm going to say that that was colorism because 
she can't be racist towards somebody who is part of her community, even though she's Caribbean and I'm African American. Like, so I was like, yeah, that's colorism. And I didn't know that's what it was. Maybe she thought I was pretty too, but I'm gonna take it that it was colorism and maybe being based on being pretty too. But I was like, okay, that's not nice. The next time I experienced it, I was also 19 and it was in my grandma's building. So I'm gonna still do a video about this later about like identity and like being mistaken for being Latina. But in my building, my grand, my most of the neighbors were people of color, especially people of African descent in some kind of way. Very few Asian people in the building and very few white people in the building. And I'm feeling like I'm always missing somebody and not any indigenous that I know of. But there was more people of color and Spanish speaking, I think, too. So I was coming out of the back way of our building and there was a I was coming out of the back way of a building and in that area there's also a little laundry mat and there was a black lady African American lady of a darker skin tone who was going to the laundry area with her baby and a little boy and it was her children and she gave me this ugly stare and I was like okay and she didn't say anything to me she's a grown lady I was a 19 year old girl who probably looked younger than 19 because I didn't really have any fashion sense back then. So I was just like, ooh, why is that lady being mean to me? And so I like left out of the building because I was going somewhere and she was going to do her laundry. So that to me was colorism. She didn't say anything to me. She was just hostile for no reason. The next time I experienced it that I could definitely say it was colorism. And, I, and it maybe this lady thought I was Latina too. But I was just like... We were in a predominantly like black neighborhood. It, it was also a Korean neighborhood. So Korean and black, like with people from different like parts of the world, African, African-American and Caribbean. But yeah, this lady, okay. I left the front of the building where my grandparents live. I was doing an errand for myself or an errand for my grandparents. I was jaywalking across the street and I was jaywalking behind a car. And the car was parked, so I was like, who, let me jaywalk as soon as it's clear. All of a sudden, the car is backing up, and I'm moving away from the car. And the car keeps backing up, even though it's not safe for me to go. And this lady keeps moving the car back towards me. And I was like, can you watch out? Like, and this lady was like, you watch out for my car. That's my car. I was like, lady, you're in a car. Can you stop backing up on me? I'm trying to cross the street. So this lady caught an attitude with me while she was trying to back up into me. And I was like, that don't make no sense. So, <laughs> so to me, that was colorism. And when I realized what colorism was in the 20 teens, I remembered that incident and the incident with the lady going to the laundry. And I was like, those women were being colorist towards me if they thought I was African American like they are, or they were being racist if they thought I was Latina, but I'm not. So yeah, I was just like, ooh, that's not nice. So that was for no reason. I looked younger than 19 at the time, and I was like,